Welcome back to the Muse and Greg. In some of my videos, I use electrical tools and terminology to help explain which product's working better. But this can all be a bit confusing if you don't know what any of those things mean. In this mini-series, you will learn a simple way to understand common electrical terms like volts, amps, watts and power, so those reviews finally make sense. And you'll also learn how to use simple functions on a multimeter, so you can do some basic measurement and fault finding yourself. You won't be an expert by the end, but you will know enough to get by, and you certainly won't embarrass yourself by asking for a 200 volt solar blanket at your local camping store. In this first video, we're going to demystify three very important terms you might have heard. Voltage, current, and resistance. Voltage, measured in volts, current, measured in amps, and resistance, measured in ohms, are simply how we measure three different electrical properties which form the foundation of electronics. The easiest way to understand them is to picture a tank of water with a pipe coming out the bottom. As you increase the water level in the tank, you increase the water pressure in the tank, which pushes the water out faster. Water pressure is just like voltage. It's simply measuring the difference in electrical charge between two different points in a circuit. Or in even simpler terms, it's like measuring how hard the electricity is trying to get from the positive to the negative. That's what voltage is. Adding more water to the tank increases the water pressure, meaning the water is now trying harder to get out of the tank. In the same way, adding more charge to a battery increases the battery voltage, meaning the electricity is now trying even harder to get from the positive to the negative. So that's voltage. It's just like water pressure. Let's now look at the water flowing out of the pipe at the bottom of the tank as a result of that pressure. The amount of water coming out of the pipe is the equivalent of electrical current. Current is simply a measure of how much electricity is flowing through a wire or a circuit, just like a flow meter might measure how much liquid is flowing through a pipe. So that's current. It's just like the amount of water flowing through a pipe. So to summarize the difference between voltage and current, just to summarize what we've seen so far, voltage is the force which allows electrical current to flow through a circuit, just like pressure is the force which pushes water through a pipe. You can't get any current flow if you don't first have voltage, just like you can't get any water flow unless there's a difference in pressure between one end of the pipe and the other. This is why if our tank was connected to another tank, water would only flow from one until the other until both tanks are at the same level and there is no difference in pressure between the level in the two tanks. It's the difference in pressure that creates current flow. Now, imagine you wanted to change how much water is coming out of the pipe. What could change? Just have a think about it for a minute. What would you change in this simple illustration if you wanted to change how much water was coming out of this open pipe? Well, in this illustration, there's two things you could change. Firstly, you could change the water pressure, which, as we've already said, is the equivalent of increasing the voltage in a battery. The more pressure you have, the faster the water is going to come out, just as you, if you increase voltage, you will also increase the current flow. So that's one thing. You could increase the voltage. But what's the other thing you could change? Well, you could also change the diameter or the length of the pipe. If you make the pipe larger in diameter, you'll get more water flowing without increasing the water pressure because you've made it easier for the water to flow. You've decreased the pipe's drag, or you've decreased its resistance to water flow. Similarly, if you make the pipe skinnier, you increase its drag, or you increase its resistance to water flow, which means you'll get less water flowing for the same amount of pressure. Changing the length of the pipe will affect this too, with a longer pipe creating more resistance than a shorter one. And this is our third electrical property, resistance. In this illustration, the diameter and the length of the pipe is the equivalent of electrical resistance. A larger diameter pipe is just like a thicker electrical cable. It allows more current to flow for the same amount of voltage. Just as we can increase water flow by increasing the pipe diameter, or shortening the pipe to reduce drag, we can increase current flow by increasing the cable thickness or shortening the cable to reduce electrical resistance. This is why the wires from your car battery to the starter motor are so much thicker than those going to the headlights. Traditional halogen headlights might draw 6 or 7 amps, but the starter motor draws over 100 amps. So the wires going to the starter motor have to be a lot thicker to carry all that current. So if you watch the water volume gauge and the amp meter here, you can see that we get the same increase in water flow and current flow by either increasing the water pressure and voltage or by decreasing the resistance by making the pipe or wires thicker. The point is that both voltage and resistance can be used to control current flow. So now we have our three key factors in this illustration. 
Voltage is the equivalent of water pressure. Current is the equivalent of the amount of water flowing in the system. And resistance is the equivalent of the pipe diameter and its length. So if all you wanted to learn was to be able to picture volts, amps and resistance, you can stop here. But if you can bear with me for another few minutes, I'm going to show you a simple tool to work one of these out if you know what the other two are, along with a couple of examples. Now there's a very simple rule which explains this. It's called Ohm's Law. It simply says that voltage equals current times resistance. Or if you put that into symbols, V equals IR. This is a bit confusing because current is represented by the letter I, but unfortunately the letter C was already taken, so I represents current here. So if you know any of these two values, V, I, or R, you can work out the third one. And if you remember high school algebra, you'd know that you can re easily rearrange this formula to isolate whichever one of the three you don't know. So if you didn't know voltage, the formula you'd use is V, voltage equals I, R, current times resistance. If you didn't know the current, it's simply I equals V divided by R. And if you didn't know the resistance, the formula you want is R equals V divided by I. Now in our illustration a moment ago, we said that the amount of electrical current flowing through a circuit is directly affected by voltage and resistance. So let's use a simple example to demonstrate this. Imagine you're wanting to install an additional reversing light on your vehicle and you want to make sure that the wiring you're going to use will be thick enough for the job. Your vehicle runs on 12 volts and the new light has a resistance of 6 ohms. How much current is going to flow into that new light? Well, we can simply use the second equation there. We're trying to work out the current, so we'd use the formula current equals voltage divided by resistance. So we do 12 volts divided by 6 ohms, and that means we're going to have about 2 amps of current flowing through that globe. And then we just make sure that the wiring we choose is going to be suitable for carrying 2 amps of current. Being able to understand these principles may help explain little things which may have puzzled you. For example, you know you'll get electrocuted if you poke your fingers into a typical domestic power point. Do not try this at home. Now, it's not actually the voltage that kills you, it's the current. And you only need about 9 milliamps of current across the heart to stop it beating, which is about the amount of current which flows through an LED. In other words, it's not very much. But a typical car battery can deliver hundreds of amps, in this case 620 of them, which is enough current to kill you many hundreds of times over. So why then can you touch the positive and negative terminals on a car battery without getting killed? Well, remember the water illustration. What are the two factors which affect current flow again? They're voltage and resistance. And in this case, the resistance of the human body is so high that only a tiny amount of current can flow. I used a multimeter to measure the resistance of my body, and it was about 200 to 300,000 ohms, which is very high. So let's use Ohm's law to calculate how much current would actually flow through a 200,000 ohm human body from a 12 volt battery. Again, we'll use the formula I equals V divided by R. So the voltage is 12 volts, the resistance is 200,000, and so the current works out at 0.06 milliamps, or 60 microamps. And to demonstrate the point, I actually did the test for real. The black cable onto the negative terminal of the battery. Like that. Hold on to that. And then my finger, I'll touch the positive of the terminal of the battery, and we'll see how much current we get flowing through my body of a 12 volt battery. There we go. So you can see there is current flowing through my body. It's about 71 microamps, 70 microamps, 69, 68. Now that's not enough to cause any dam damage, which is the reason you're able to touch the battery with no problem at all. So you do get current flowing, but the battery voltage is so low, it's not enough to cause a problem. So while the battery is more than capable of delivering hundreds of amps, it needs a very low resistance to be able to get that much current flow from only 12 volts of voltage, certainly much less than the human body, which is why we only got such a tiny amount of current flow. If you go back to our water illustration, this is just like the pipe being as skinny as a drinking straw, and since the pressure is so low, the water just comes out at a little dribble. If you want some homework, pick the right version of Ohm's Law to work out how much resistance would allow 100 amps of current to flow from a 12 volt battery, and you'll see it's very low. So that's the end of our first video. In our next video, we're going to be looking at power. Now power is really important to understand when you start looking at solar blankets, light bars and globes, because these are all rated in watts. And then in the third video, we're going to show you how you can measure some of these things with a multimeter. So what do you think? Did this video help explain these concepts to you, or did I miss something or go over it too quickly? If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments below so I can make sure that's sorted out for the next video. Either way, make sure you like and subscribe if you found this helpful so you don't miss any updates in the series. But that's all for now, so I'll catch you next time.